Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. It is an Aventador kind of day. The Baby Mac, the Baby Mac is not here. It is en route to Los Angeles, Lambo Newport Beach, Sunset Gran Turismo. If you live in LA, if you live in Orange County, come say hi. It's an Aventador kind, actually. It's story time. Today's video is not gonna be a normal style vlog. This is a video I've been wanting to film for a long time. I wanna share a story with you guys about how I quit a dead end job back in 2013, uh, found myself living in my Audi TT, got a new dead end job, which I suppose in one way or another led me to buying a Lamborghini Aventador. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is James. I love cars. If you're not new to the channel, if you're an OG, uh, thanks so much for subscribing, for smashing that like button, for supporting me, because this story wouldn't exist without your guys' support. So, here we go. It's 2013, I'm living in Park City, Utah. I work at the Montage Deer Valley. Picture this five-star resort way up in the mountains. It's like a million square feet. The ultimate ski destination. Fresh out of college, you know, I'm ready to tackle on the world, ready to prove myself. I'm good at my job, I'm a go-getter. I work as an administrative assistant and I make $17 an hour. Now, I have a degree in accounting, I have a degree in finance. It's not the best job for me, but it, it's a start. You know, I'm working in the right direction. I've been here for about 18 months. I find out one day, like one day, this is very spur of the moment, that one of the guys I work with directly is getting paid more than me. Now since day one, I've been constantly taking projects off his workload because he can't finish them and my bosses know that I can. So when I find out that he's being paid more than me uh, in typical millennial fashion, um, that's an injustice and I need to do something about it. So this is spur of the moment. Like I find out this day, same day, I walk into my boss's office and I put in my two weeks notice. I'm assuming being, being the egotistical individual that I was, that I'm irreplaceable, I'm way too valuable. When I walk in, I give my notice instantly, he's gonna give me a raise and life's gonna be fair. He looks up at me and he says, awesome man, thank you so much for all your hard work, we really appreciate you. If there's anything you need in the future, let us know. I learned a lot of things in that moment. First off, uh, everyone's replaceable, employees are expendable, and maybe I wasn't as good at my job as I thought I was. I mean, there was 200 people in line who would take that job in an instant. And fast forward two weeks later, I didn't have a job. I couldn't pay my rent, so I had to move out. So being the bright 23 year old I was at this time, I decide that I'm going to pursue YouTube full time. I have 200 subscribers and I'm gonna become a full time YouTuber. I packed up my 2002 Audi TT and I drove from Park City, Utah down to Beverly Hills, California. This is my plan. I'm gonna live out of my car and every single day I'm gonna walk around searching for rare supercars and I'm gonna film them and post it onto my YouTube channel. The videos I was filming were kind of sort of boring. It would have been so much more interesting to see me living in an Audi TT, but I was so embarrassed, you know, because I didn't, I couldn't shower, I couldn't brush my teeth. It was pretty embarrassing and I didn't really want the whole world to know about it. I'd walk around Beverly Hills for 12 hours just filming cars. So car spotting is the act of, you know, finding random cool cars, and in my case, filming them, and posting it up to my YouTube channel. So that's what I did. I'd walk around Beverly Hills for 12 hours a day, and then I'd go to the McDonald's afterward. I couldn't afford McDonald's, um, but I would use their free Wi-Fi to upload my videos. I probably had like less than $1,000 in my bank account. Must have been making anywhere from like five to seven dollars on YouTube AdSense, because gas was so expensive that when you have an income of five to seven dollars a day, you know, if you're driving 30 miles, your profit, you know, your profit margins uh, are gonna be cut in half. I'd go to the grocery store, I'd get a loaf of bread, I'd get peanut butter, I'd get honey, and that's what I would eat every single day. I couldn't afford water, but I could afford the off-brand cola because that was cheaper. I lived in the car for 50 days. One night I'm walking out of McDonald's, out to my Audi TT after uploading a video, and the car won't start. I sit there for maybe five, 10 seconds, try to crank it again, Car won't start. I sit there for 30 minutes, crank it again, car won't start. It's not a battery issue. I wish it was a battery issue, that would've been easy. The car needed a new fuel pump. Now it's like, I don't know, 11 o'clock, midnight, and my car is broken down. I have no money, I have less than $1,000 in my bank account, 
and I, I have nowhere to go, I have no one to call, I, I'm stuck. I, I don't know what to do. I sleep in the car that night outside McDonald's on Santa Monica Boulevard, wake up in the morning, call Audi Santa Monica, they quote me a new fuel pump is gonna be $1,200. I don't even have $1,000 in my bank account. I remember that first night sleeping in my dead Audi at 4 a.m. and just like losing control of my emotions. I was so mad, I hated myself, and I couldn't stop telling myself what a loser and what a failure I was. I had a degree in accounting and finance, I had a good upbringing, and here I am, living out of my dead Audi TT, making $5 a day, filming stupid YouTube videos. Like, what sequence of, a, like, how dumb can you be? And I just remember beating myself up so much and like I, I never lose control of my emotions, but I remember just sobbing and telling myself what a loser I was. My mom offered to bail me out. She offered to pay for the fuel pump. You know, I pay her back, she said, but I refused. I hated myself, but I still hadn't lost my pride. And I knew somehow, some way, I was gonna get out of this situation myself. I ordered a new fuel pump online. Obviously, I couldn't afford expedited shipping, so it took eight days before I could get the fuel pump, but because of where my car was parked on Santa Monica Boulevard outside McDonald's, I was parked illegally, and surely I would get a parking ticket eventually. So I would have to push the car around by myself, you know, usually at odd hours in the middle of the night from parking space to parking space, just waiting for this fuel pump to arrive. Eight days later, it finally arrived. I had to take a bus ride three hours into downtown Los Angeles because when you're living in your car, you can't ship a fuel pump to the 2002 Audi TT on Santa Monica Boulevard. Like, they don't do that. Uh, so I had to take this bus ride to the UPS Depot to pick it up. I remember getting back to my Audi TT and I was like a surgeon. Like, I changed that fuel pump. Uh, it took maybe 45 minutes. I had a screwdriver and a hammer. And I remember, I remember getting ready to crank the car and I was like so nervous because if the car didn't start, I, I didn't know what I was gonna do. It started. I, I like, even to this, like, I, I have never been so excited in my entire life. The Audi's fixed at this point, but I have to reevaluate. Um, you know, being a YouTuber full time, I failed. It, it wasn't gonna happen. Eventually, I got another job back home in Bend, Oregon, night auditor working for a fancy hotel once again. I worked 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., so I worked the graveyard shift. I didn't work with anybody. I was just super, super lonely. I had no friends, no social life. I hated it. I hated myself even more. It was more miserable than when I was living in my car because at least when I was living in my car, like I was pursuing a dream, whereas now I had, I had failed and I was making $14 an hour. So, quick summary, I was making $17 an hour, I quit that job because I felt like I wasn't being paid enough, I lived in my Audi TT for 58 days, now I worked a new job that I hated, the graveyard shift, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m., making $14 an hour. I was definitely moving in the right direction. I was, I was, uh, yeah. I wasn't making any money at this point, $14 an hour, yet I would save up as much as I could and every single vacation day earned, I would use to travel to grow my YouTube channel. Uh, the Gumball 3000 was in Miami, Florida. They were driving to New York City. You know, I saved up enough money for airfare, for a rental car. Obviously, I couldn't afford a hotel room and so I slept in the, in the trunk of my rental car for eight days to make $10 a day filming YouTube videos. I just wanted this dream so bad. And I guess sometimes in life, if you want something bad enough, you're willing to sleep in the trunk of your rental car. Um, working the graveyard shift alone gives you a lot of time to think and a lot of time to apply for new jobs, which is exactly what I did. I'd work on my resume, I'd work on my cover letter, and I would apply for new jobs. And in the summer of 2014, I had my, I had my big break. I met a guy named Nick. Uh, Nick gave me a job as a job cost accountant back in Park City, Utah. Uh, the salary was $45,000. There was a list of uh, goals and expectations that if I met uh, in six months time, I'd get a raise to $50,000 a year. I met the expectations. $50,000 a year, I was rolling. 
I'm making $50,000 a year, but that YouTube dream, like, I, I couldn't stuff it. I wanted it so bad, but I had to be smarter. I had to make smarter decisions, more strategic decisions, if I ever wanted to pursue it full time. Now, I'm making $50,000 a year, I'm happy, I used to live in my Audi TT spending less than $3 a day. Just because I'm making more now, why should I be spending more? And so I didn't. I, I got an apartment, but I still maintained that ultra cheap lifestyle and I saved thousands and thousands of dollars every single month. And my savings account just started to grow and grow and grow. September 26, 2015, I bought on a entry level accounting job I bought a 2006 Lamborghini Gallardo. Now, of course, I financed the car through the roof, but I bought it. I bought this car. Uh, I don't, I don't, I should not have bought this car. I don't know how I bought this car. Everybody told me I was, I was ruining my financial future. I should have been buying a house, but sometimes in life, you buy a 2006 Lamborghini Gallardo, you can't afford it, and you end up camping at a Walmart parking lot with a $24 tent. And that's exactly what I did on the way home. I bought this car in Newport Beach, California, couldn't afford a hotel room, and so I camped at Walmart. The idea behind buying the Lamborghini, it was gonna be an investment in my YouTube channel because up until this point, I was filming other people driving their cool cars. But I felt like a young guy who owned a Lamborghini but was an average Joe working a normal job, I felt like people would be interested in what I had to say. And sure enough, I was right. Lamborghini at age 26, this is what I do for a living. Four million views, $10,000 later, my plan was working. I was onto something. April 1st, 2015, the company I worked for went bankrupt. I lost my job. YouTube ad revenue wasn't paying for the Gallardo. My salary as an accountant was paying for the Gallardo. I should sell the car. 100% I should sell the car. Everyone was telling me you should sell the car, get another job, get back on your feet, reevaluate, you can buy another Gallardo. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't sell the Lamborghini, I, I still have it. I didn't get another job either. It was take two baby. Round two, YouTube full time, here we go. Sometimes in life guys, you want something bad enough, uh, you live in your Audi TT and, and you fail. And sometimes in life you give up and you never, you never tackle that dream again. But sometimes in life you don't give up and you don't sell the Lamborghini. And it's round two, baby. And uh, that's what I did. Round two. But round two is gonna be different. Round two is gonna be smarter and I wasn't gonna fail. I had no idea what I was doing. My, like my foundation, my job, which was paying for the Gallardo was gone. YouTube ad revenue barely covered the car payments. I just started filming every single day. I love cars and I felt like I could share my passion and I could connect with people. And I would share my successes and my failures and I got so much hate and people were rooting for me to fail. People wanted to see me fail and I, I think that was extra motivation to succeed. I traveled the world chasing the most exclusive cars that no one had filmed and no one had seen. I had to separate myself from everybody else I had to find a way for people to find me and I would travel to the ends of the earth to do it. I went to Dubai with my two best friends. I ran the Great Wall of China. I did donuts with a Christmas tree on top of the Lamborghini. I jumped out of an airplane twice. I flew to Hong Kong for 20 hours. I gained 1,200,000 subscribers and over a quarter billion views. Sometimes in life, when everyone's telling you that you can't do it, go prove them wrong. Sometimes in life, when you want something really, 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 really bad, how far are you willing to go? Are you willing to push your dead Audi TT around the streets of Beverly Hills to pursue a dream?